Let's get started. Number 8. The Strength of Desperation You've probably heard of mothers lifting cars to save their children. It sounds like urban legend, but it's real. And it's called hysterical strength. When the brain perceives a life or death situation, it overrides its usual safety limits. Your body is capable of much more power than it lets you use daily. Your brain just doesn't trust you with it. Inside your muscles, there's a built-in governor, the Golgi tendon organ. It's like a cautious manager that stops your muscle from contracting so hard that it could tear itself apart. But under extreme stress, your brain temporarily disables this safety switch. The result? You access power levels that would normally be impossible, lifting weights 50% heavier, punching through barriers, or sprinting beyond exhaustion. One famous case happened in 1982, when Angela Cavallo of Georgia lifted a 1964 Chevy Impala off her son, who was trapped underneath. She held it long enough for neighbors to pull him to safety. Doctors later said adrenaline alone couldn't explain it. Her muscles had bypassed their biological limits. But here's the dark side. After the event, people often experience torn muscles, ruptured tendons, or temporary paralysis. The body breaks itself to save itself. That's the cost of unlocking this hidden power. It doesn't come free. So, technically, you're always a superhero. You're just built with a governor that keeps you from self-destruction. Number 7. Time Distortion Reflex Ever noticed how time slows down during a car accident or when you're in danger? It's not just adrenaline, it's your brain switching into a hyper-recording state. When the amygdala, the brain's fear center, fires, it boosts the rate at which you encode memories. You're not actually experiencing more time. You're just processing more frames per second. It's like turning your brain's frame rate from 30 FPS to 120 FPS. Later, when you recall the memory, it feels like time stretched out. Soldiers, athletes, and free solo climbers all describe the same sensation, an eerie slow-motion clarity. Neuroscientists call it temporal dilation, and it's one of evolution's cleverest survival tools. When seconds count, perception expands, giving you a chance to react, dodge, or think before disaster hits. But the downside? That same mechanism is why trauma feels so endless. During a panic attack or accident, time doesn't just slow, it traps you inside it. Your brain records every millisecond in vivid detail, making the memory hard to fade. So, the next time your heart races and the world slows down, remember, your body's not failing. It's activating ancient survival software, one that turns you into both the camera and the film. Number 6. The Blood Doping Mechanism You might think Olympic athletes have to train for years to boost their oxygen levels, but your body can do it in days, if you push it close enough to death. In emergencies, like drowning, suffocating, or even extreme cold, your spleen releases a hidden store of red blood cells. It's called the mammalian dive reflex, and humans still have it from our oceanic ancestors. The instant your face touches cold water, your heart rate drops. Blood flow shifts to your core, and your spleen squeezes out oxygen-rich blood like a biological scuba tank. Japanese pearl divers, known as Ayama, have used this reflex for centuries. They can hold their breath for minutes at a time, diving 30 meters deep with no gear. After repeated dives, their bodies naturally adapt. Their spleens even grow larger, like a built-in oxygen reserve. But here's the eerie part. Scientists have found the same reflex in newborn babies. When submerged in water, they instinctively hold their breath and slow their heart rate. Proof that somewhere deep inside, we remember the ocean. So, under enough stress, your body becomes a diver, a machine, a survivor. All rolled into one. Number 5. Pain. Shutdown. Protocol. Pain is supposed to protect you, but under extreme stress, your body can simply turn it off. It's not bravery, it's neurochemistry. When your brain detects trauma, it can't immediately escape, like during a car crash or a battlefield injury. It floods your system with endorphins and enkephalins, natural painkillers that bind to the same receptors as morphine. It's the body's way of saying, we'll deal with this later. Soldiers often report running on shattered legs, unaware of their injuries until after battle. Victims of shark attacks have walked calmly to shore before collapsing. Even athletes who tear ligaments mid-game sometimes finish their routines flawlessly, only realizing the damage minutes later. Psychologists call this the stress analgesia effect, an emergency override that temporarily disconnects your consciousness from pain perception. It's a short-term trick, not a solution. Once the threat passes and adrenaline fades, the pain returns tenfold. But there's a catch. People who experience repeated trauma, like soldiers, abuse survivors, or extreme athletes, can become addicted to that numbness. Their brains learn to dull emotional pain the same way they dull physical pain. And over time, they stop feeling both. So yes, your body can make its own morphine. 
but it also reminds you that survival sometimes comes with emotional scar tissue, the kind that doesn't heal on command. Number four, tunnel vision mode. Under stress, your world literally shrinks. Vision narrows, hearing fades, and everything irrelevant disappears. That's tunnel vision, and it's your brain's attempt to increase survival odds by focusing only on the threat. Police officers and firefights often report not hearing their own gunshots. Race car drivers describe total silence seconds before a crash. In reality, their sensory systems haven't failed. They've been reprioritized. The brain shuts out non-essential input to boost processing power for sight, reaction, and movement. This happens because of the locus coeruleus, a brainstem region that releases norepinephrine, sharpening focus while muting peripheral signals. It's the same reason you can't hear people shouting when you're terrified. Your attention bandwidth has been hijacked for survival. But here's the eerie twist. The same mechanism that saves your life can also distort reality. Witnesses to violent crimes often disagree about details because tunnel vision edits memory. Your brain records only what it deems relevant, erasing the rest. In short, stress doesn't just change your behavior. It changes the lens through which you see the world, sometimes literally. Number three, the freeze response. Most people think survival has two settings, fight or flight. But the most ancient one is freeze. When neither running nor fighting guarantees safety, the brain triggers an instinct older than mammals, stillness. It's the same trick opossums and frogs use when they play dead. Your heart rate drops, breathing slows, muscles stiffen, and consciousness partially detaches. Victims of assaults often describe watching events unfold from outside their body. That's called tonic immobility, and it's not weakness. It's a deep evolutionary mechanism that convinces predators or people that you're already gone. In humans, it's often followed by memory gaps or emotional numbness. The freeze response helps you survive the moment, but it fragments how you process it. That's why survivors sometimes struggle to explain what happened. Their brain recorded it like a blurry dream, not a continuous story. But there's a silver lining. That same freeze state is the foundation of deep meditation and flow. The body stills, the mind quiets, and external noise disappears. In one context, it's terror. In another, transcendence. The wiring is the same, only the trigger changes. Number two, the superhuman hearing effect. Under extreme stress, your body can unlock something bizarre, temporary super hearing. It sounds like comic book nonsense, but it's real. During near death situations, the brain amplifies auditory processing to detect threats before they're visible. Soldiers in combat zones report hearing footsteps hundreds of feet away. Drivers seconds before a crash can suddenly pick up the faint whine of their brakes. This hyper-awareness comes from the amygdala auditory cortex loop, which hijacks your hearing system and boosts signal gain, like cranking a volume knob past its limit. Your inner ear also changes under stress. The tiny muscles that usually dampen loud sounds, called the stapedius reflex, relax, letting more sound energy through. It's the reason why even a whisper or the sound of your own heartbeat can feel deafening when you're panicked. But here's the catch. After the threat passes, the system can overcorrect. That's why some trauma survivors develop hyperacusis, a condition where ordinary sounds feel unbearably loud. The body overtrained for danger and forgot how to stand down. So, yes, fear sharpens your hearing, but it also leaves an echo. Number one, the hidden immortality switch. This one sounds supernatural, but it's pure biology. In moments of total collapse, drowning, freezing, or cardiac arrest, the body doesn't immediately die. It shifts into a last-ditch state known as suspended animation. Cells stop their usual metabolism, oxygen use plummets, and the body enters a near-death limbo where time itself seems to pause. Doctors have revived people after hours of clinical death using this mechanism. In 2019, surgeons at the University of Maryland placed trauma patients into deep hypothermia, cooling their blood to 10 degrees to halt death mid-process. The brain, deprived of oxygen, should have died within minutes. Instead, it stayed intact for over an hour. Scientists believe this mirrors ancient survival adaptations, like frogs that freeze solid during winter and thaw back alive. The same genes that protect those creatures exist in humans, just dormant. Under catastrophic stress, they flicker awake. This immortality switch doesn't grant eternal life, but it proves your body can defy biology when it must. Death, it seems, isn't an instant. It's a negotiation. That's it for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.